In this video, we will show you how to replace your upper ball joint on this Dodge Ram. This will be located mounted directly to your front differential. Let's get into it. Just a quick note on this, whenever you're going to replace a ball joint, you want to make sure that you replace them as a pair. Okay friends, let's get started on our job. The first thing we'll do is safely raise and support the front of the vehicle so the wheels are off the ground. Once you've done that, we'll continue on to removing the center cover and then all eight of our 24 millimeter lug nuts. Remove your wheel. With the wheel out of the way, the next thing we'll do is continue on to dismounting the ABS wire from this area. We'll find one little bracket right here. We'll just lift that up and out of there. Now we can come along the flex hose here. There we are. Let's move along to removing our caliper from the area. To do this, you'll find that you have two 12.16 millimeter headed bolts. We'll start with this one up along the top. We're going to loosen this, but leave it in just a couple threads. Quick inspection on that. Now let's carefully grab that caliper. We'll slide it away from the brake rotor. At this point, you can have a look at the brake pads. If it looks like they need to be replaced, now's a perfect time to do it. We'll set this aside. Remove the brake rotor. Quick inspection. Set it aside. Along the outside of the wheel bearing is where you're going to find your axle nut. We'll use some cutters and remove the cotter pin here. Now we can remove our axle nut using a 1 in 11 16 socket. Behind that you'll find you have a washer. Remove that as well. Quick inspection on these. We will be reusing them. A little bit of penetrant. We'll let this sit here and do its job and we can make our way along the back side of the knuckle. Now that we've removed that nut, let's make our way along the back side of the knuckle. What we're going to be looking for on our application is four 14 millimeter headed mounting bolts that hold the wheel bearing to the knuckle. that one. To remove the bearing from the knuckle safely without damaging the bearing, you could put in one of your mounting bolts along the backside here. Continue on with an air chisel with a half inch drive on the end and then use the specific socket that you need to go right on the head of that mounting bolt. Once you've done so, you can cause some vibration to essentially break this free without damaging the bearing. Now that this is broken free, we can remove this. Get the backing plate out of there. This should be in much better condition. 
Now we can set this aside. With the wheel bearing out of the way, let's remove our axle from this area. Just slide it right on through the knuckle. Let's move along to removing the outer tie rod end from the knuckle. On this, you'll use a 21 millimeter socket to remove the nut. Start that back on there a couple threads. We'll continue on with a hammer and we're going to give this a couple loving bonks, trying to cause vibration to break this free. Be extremely careful not to damage the tie rod while doing so. You can remove this nut, remove the tie rod end from the knuckle. Let's continue on with an inch and an eighth socket to remove the lower ball joint nut. Give it a quick inspection and then start it back on a couple threads. Now we can start removing the upper ball joint nut. On this one, typically you'll find that you have a locking cotter pin. We'll use some cutters and just get that right out of there. Once we've done that, we can remove the nut. Let's use our cutters and pull this right out of here. We'll use a 15 16 to remove this nut. Once that's off of there, we'll be making sure that our ABS bracket is still reusable and we can set this mounting nut aside. The next thing we'll have to do is cause some vibration so that we can separate the knuckle from the ball joints. Make sure before you start doing this process, you do have the safety nut on that lower ball joint. This is very important so it doesn't fall down and potentially hurt you. Now that that's nice and loose, let's remove this nut and the knuckle from the vehicle. With the knuckle out of the way, we have a clear view of our upper ball joint. To start removing this, we'll be using a ball joint removal tool. For the upper ball joint, you want to be pressing this up and out of the front differential ear, being extremely careful not to damage the differential while doing so. Let's start setting up our ball joint press. We want to make sure that we have an adapter on here that will press up against this and push it up and through. Up along the top, you want to make sure you have a cup that fits over the ball joint but presses up against the knuckle. And then of course, we'll just have a flat disc up along the top so we can press against. Once you're sure everything's set up correctly so the ball joint can press up and into this cup, we'll continue on applying some pressure, forcing the ball joint up and out. Now we can remove our ball joint tool. and the ball joint. There it is, friends. Use a wire brush to clean up the mounting area. All right, now we can install our brand new upper ball joint. When you do so, you wanna pay attention to where that locking cotter pin will go. We wanna have that hole facing straight front and rear. Get this aligned properly. We'll set that on there. At this point, we'll continue on with our ball joint press. Up along the top, you wanna to make sure you have a cup so you do not damage the ball joint. As for the bottom, we'll find a cup that fits over the ball joint up against the differential. Now we can get our ball joint press on here and start pressing it into the differential. There we are. Let's remove our tool. Once you have it off of there, it's important to pay attention all the way along the top of the differential where the ball joint pressed into it. You wanna make sure it's as flush as can be. If it's up by even a little bit, go ahead and reinstall your ball joint installer and press it down until it is flush. This looks perfect. Now we can get ready to install our steering knuckle. 
Let's make sure that we put it around each one of those ball joint studs. We'll just slide it right up. At this point, I'll start on my lower ball joint nut here. Now we can continue on to our ABS bracket and our upper ball joint nut. As far as this ABS bracket, we want to have this area facing towards the rear of the vehicle. Right up in there. Now I'll start my nut on the bottom here. Let's continue on to tightening each of these. Now we can bottom out each of our ball joint nuts. Use an inch and an eighth down along the bottom here. We'll use a 15 sixteenths for the top nut. Torque the lower ball joint to 110 foot pounds. Now we can torque the upper ball joint nut to 60 foot pounds. Once you have that torqued, the next thing you want to do is pay attention to the hole that goes through the ball joint stud and the slots that are on the nut. We're trying to get our cotter pin straight on through there. If for some reason it's not lined up, continue tightening this nut until the very next slot is. Now we can install our cotter pin. Slide that right on through and pin it over so there's no way this nut can loosen up on you while you're driving down the road. Now we can start carefully installing our axle. We'll be sliding this all the way into the differential tube. Let's continue on with a wire brush. We're going to clean up the mounting area where the wheel bearing will sit. Along the inside here, and then you also want to try to get along this area, right where the bearing is going to press up against. Once you fully clean the area, use some anti-seize all along this inboard side here and along this flush edge. Aside from that, we'll also be coating the splined area of our axle. You don't necessarily need to cover the threaded area. At this point, we can continue on by putting on the backing plate, which ours is rotted. I'll be leaving it out. And then, of course, the bearing. Slide this in. You want to make sure you have the ABS sensor up along the top. Slide this right in. Align our mounting bolt holes. There we are. Let's get the ABS wire mounted into this bracket here. Let's continue mounting in the wheel bearing to the steering knuckle. We'll start in all four of our mounting bolts. Once they're started in, you can go ahead and snug them up and then torque them to 122 foot-pounds. Do the same over here. All right, now we can prepare to put on our brake rotor. Before you do so, you want to make sure you clean the mating surface on your wheel bearing and on the inside of the rotor. You can use some parts cleaner, maybe even a wire brush. After that, we'll continue on with some anti-seize along the mating surface. Now we can put that rotor on there. 
Typically when I do this, I'm going to use a lug nut and I want to put it on to try to hold the rotor in place. Continue on to the caliper. We'll be sliding that right on over the rotor. We'll get this in place. Start in each of your mounting bolts. Snug them up, torque them to 130 foot pounds. Now we can reattach our outer tie rod end to the knuckle. Just swing this right up into the proper position. Start on the mounting nut, snug it up, and then we'll torque it to 80 foot pounds. Let's make our way over and resecure our ABS wire along the flex hose. We'll just take this and press it into the plastic brackets. We've got this area that goes into the flex hose. We'll make sure that that's secured as well. Press right in there. Now we can get this lug nut off of here. We're going to continue on by putting on the wheel. We'll start on all of the lug nuts and snug them up. We'll get the wheel back on the ground and we can continue on with the axle nut and torque everything as needed. With the wheel safely on the ground, we'll continue on torquing these in a crisscross manner to 135 foot-pounds. We can continue on with our axle washer and the axle nut. We'll bottom this out and then torque that to 180 foot-pounds. When you're tightening this, it's a good idea to make sure that you'd never use an air tool because you don't want to damage the bearing. Now we can torque this to 180 foot-pounds. Torque. Now that we have that torque to 180 foot-pounds, we'll continue on with a brand new locking cotter pin. Slide that right on through the slot here. We'll peen it over. Continue on to your center cover. Looking along the back, you'll find that you have four of these ports that will fit right over your lug nuts. Okay friends, we've got the truck back together. At this point, you can go ahead and take it for a road test down to your local alignment shop. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.